Hey guys, today I want to talk about a tool that will make you a more efficient programmer and will help you a lot when you run into problems with your code. I'm talking about the PyCharm debugger and to get into it, let me first explain this simple example file here that I built. It starts with a main function and inside this main function we do the following thing 10 times. We save a random number into A, we save a random number into B, then we add up those two random numbers, and at last we check if this um, sum is prime, and if it's prime, we print it. And this is prime function here is defined above the main function. When we now run our program, we should get some prime numbers between 1 and 20. And in this case, five of our attempts were actually prime. And in this case, we are lucky. Our program does exactly what we intended it to do. But nevertheless, let's look into the debugger to help you understand how you can utilize it if you would really run into some problems with your code. So, first of all, we need to define a breakpoint. When you click somewhere in the gutter here, for example, in line 23, a red dot will appear. And this red dot is a so called breakpoint. When you now call the debugger with this icon here in the top right corner or with Shift F9, your program will run exactly to the point of the breakpoint and it will pause there and give you information about all your current variables. So let's do this. Now you see that a new section opened up and Inside this section, you have a lot of functionality and a lot of information about your program. So let's get into this. First of all, let's look at this variable section here on the right. You can see that we have information here about all the current variables in our program. So for example, we know that A is 2 at this moment, B is 3 at this moment, C is 5 at this moment, because C is the sum of A and B, and I is zero at the moment because we're still in the first iteration because our debugger paused our program just at this point. Actually, since we know that C is five and five is a prime number, we could take a look inside the console and see if five is printed and actually it is. But first let's go back into the variable section because there's another very useful point here because you can add new watches to your debugger. Here you can just type in simple expressions, for example, a equals b, if you want to know if those numbers are the same at the moment. And of course, two is not equal to three, so this evaluates to false at the moment. And you could also call functions here to see what they will return at this point. So you could call is prime of a. a is two, and two is a prime number, and our function returns true at this point. So this is really some amazing stuff you can use to save you a lot of time and effort when trying to find mistakes or errors in your program. Another important button is this resume button here. This resume button will take you to your next breakpoint. So it will run the program, and when it sees a breakpoint again, it will pause. In this case, our breakpoint is in this while loop, so we will just have one more iteration. Let me click on it. And you can see that our values changed. For example, our i is now 1 because we're in the second iteration now. Our a is 10, our b is 1, our c is 11. Now, if you want to go step by step through your program, you can utilize those uh, blue arrows here. The first one is called step over, then you have step into, step into my code, step out, and run to cursor. And yeah, let's just walk through them. For example, step over just goes to the next step of your program. You can see that we are now here in line 15, now we're in line 16, and every time a variable gets updated in our program, it actually gets updated in this variable list here on the right uh, corner. This is step over. Now, let's look at step into. Step into has almost the same functionality, but 
it actually steps into the functions that are called in the code. So if I now press step into, and because we are in line 17, and we call the function rent int, let's see what happens. I press step into, and actually the debugger opens the random module and shows us how the rent in function works internally. This can be useful in some cases, but if you just want to step inside your own functions, there's another blue button and it's called step into my code. So if we use this function, we go to the next line, go to the next line, and here we can see we're calling our function is prime, and if we press step into my code again, we will get into the function is prime, and now our variable section changed, and our frame on the left changed. I actually did not talk about the frames yet, but you can see that we have a module that is the frame that calls our main function. Then we have our main frame that is everything that happens in our main function. This is what we looked at earlier. And we have the is prime frame. This is this current frame we are in because we called the is prime function. And here actually we get some errors because we still have the watch a equals b, but we don't have any information inside this function about a or b. But we have a new number here. This is the 12th. And now if we wanted to, we could just see how this is prime function works by just going through it. And actually, because i is 2 in this case, we found a divisor of the 12th and actually just returned false in the first iteration. At last, we have two more blue arrows. We have the step out arrow that just uh, steps out of a current called function. And we have the run to cursor blue arrow. So if we set the cursor to this B, for example, and press run to cursor, we go through the whole program until we hit the cursor. So those are the most, most important things you can use to debug your program. Maybe it takes a bit of time to get used to those blue arrows. But in general, this is a really great tool to help you debug your code. I hope this uh, helped you. And if it did, please leave a like. And let me know if you want to have some tutorials on other topics. And I see you in the next video.